What does Pegaya call the component which is in both sea stones and the clouds of Sky Island? Alpha, yeah. How did my fun pirate quiz turn into a chemistry exam? Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and my favorite branch of science is of course biology, but that's mostly because my high school teacher was pretty hot. But today we are here because I have been challenged. Apparently there is a quiz on the internet that claims to be one of the most difficult One Piece trivia based events possible. And I have to say when it comes to One Piece quizzes that call themselves difficult, I'm usually very disappointed because the first question is always something like question, Number one, who gave Monkey D. Luffy his straw hat? Was it A, Shanks, B, Whoop Slap, or C, <laughs> Luffy doesn't have a hat, silly. You know that sort of stuff that probably even non One Piece fans have a decent chance of answering at almost 100% accuracy. But I've been told this one is quite different. And I've also been told that I'm probably going to fail quite spectacularly. So that should be fun. For some reference, it's called One Piece Hardcore Quiz. Very generic, but very promising. And there's a link to it in the description if you'd like to take it for yourself and then watch me flail around and fail around struggling to answer questions. But since we're already doing a quiz for this here video, I say we go ahead and let fate take the wheel. The very first question that pops up is going to be our subscribe game. So basically you're all going to answer it with me. And if you are incorrect, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, thus resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. All right, let's do it then. Show me what you got, quiz. What are the oven baked noodles in Alabaster called? Mizu Mizu, Moodles, Conifer, or Terracotta Special? Holy crap, so it's gonna be that kind of quiz, is it? Anyway, I, I think I know, but before I show my working, let's take this opportunity to have you all choose a delightful answer. Which of the four is it? And if you choose incorrectly, then you're gonna do the subscribe thing. No arguments, you're gonna do it. But I think what this is referring to is when we meet Ace on Alabaster and these noodles are what he's eating in the restaurant and then Chris eats to fall asleep into, maybe. And I'm probably going to pick C because, well, Mizu Mizu is, I think, obviously incorrect. Terracotta Special sounds a bit too French for Alabaster and Moodle, whilst Hilarious is definitely wrong. So by process of elimination, I think it is C. And bam, it certainly was. So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know things to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. So we're off to a good start. Now, question number the second. Did Sir Crocodile wear three rings on his one hand? Yes or no? Uh, I actually think it might be more than three. If I remember correctly, Crocodile's hand is pretty blinged out. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'm just, I'm gonna go for no. Aha, success. Question three, who said everything humans can imagine is possible in reality? Willie Gallon, Joe Wall, Louis Arnott. So I know what this is referring to, but with that said, not entirely sure what the answer is. This is a really weird moment in One Piece where we quote a fictional in-world scientist and the Straw Hats actually encounter a ship that falls from the sky. And what makes this a little bit harder is that I'm pretty sure this fictional character isn't actually named in the anime. It's just like a manga thing. But I think I'm going to go with Willy Gallon because I have this, this ridiculous vague memory that may or may not be headcanon. It's like that moment in Jujutsu Kaisen where a new memory just gets inserted into Toto. That might be what's happening here. But I have this vague memory of thinking, huh, that name sounds like Galleon, which is, you know, the huge ship that fell from the sky. And that's just how my brain seems to want to interpret things right now. All right, give me the willy. Yeah. All right, question four. What was the name of the pub where Buggy had his base the first time he appeared? Is it Drinker's Pub Meshi or Sake's Club? Hi. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest with you. I don't even have a recollection of them drinking in a pub. I just remember them screwing around in like generic area of Orange Town. I think I'm gonna have to use noodle logic here. Sake's club sounds not right, considering I don't think they were drinking sake. Drinker's pub sounds utterly absurd. So in theory, it has to be meshy. Like at least that sounds like a thing that exists. I don't know. It's reasonable. So we're gonna go with that. It was Drinker's pub. Really? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. 
Why not? Question five. How many boxing gloves did Gorilla Puncher 13 have? Oh my God. 30, 25, 20, 13, or 10. All right, so the thing about this question to keep in mind is it's definitely gonna be something dumb because this is Foxy we're talking about. It's definitely not 13 and it's probably not 10. So I think I'm gonna go with 30 because it feels nice and round. And I guess sounds a bit like 13, I suppose. So yeah, whatever, let's do it. Of course it was 25. Of course it was 25. 30 is far too reasonable. It sounds too much like 13 and Foxy would never be that semi-logical. So they, yeah, that one's on me. 25 was the most unreasonable answer and it's the one I should have gone for. How many stones did Smoker play with the first time he appeared? Four, six, seven, or nine? Well, it's, <laughs> it's definitely guessing time. And of course I'm wrong. Seriously though, I had to go and look this up afterwards because I did not remember it. And yes, he is clearly stacking seven stones in chapter 98 for whatever reason. In my defense though, Smoker actually first appears in chapter 97 and there are no stones to be seen. So you know what? I'm gonna be using that as an excuse for why I suck. Question seven. Was Sanji working before he met with Zeph on the orbit? Yes or no? 100% yes. He was in fact working on the orbit, I believe. So that's a weirdly easy question. What does Pagaya call the component which is in both sea stones and the clouds of Sky Island? Hogonin? Hyrobloin, Haramethium, or Oligoton. So I actually used to know this emphasis on the past tense of the word used, but it's definitely one of the P words. So my mind wants to say none of these. It wants to say pyroglobin, and I don't know, is that is that a real thing? I just know that this question has come up in some sort of One Piece trivia before, and so I'm going to go with the word that sounds most like pyroglobin, which is pyrobloin. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, great, success, good enough. And not only that, I did just look this up afterwards and it's actually pyrobloin. So my weird pyroglobin tangent was kind of relevant. I'm guessing it was just misspelt by our cruel quiz master here. Question nine, are the numbers 200 to 399 for the soldier zombies, yes or no? Oh, man, look, as someone who actively tries not to pay too much attention to Gekko Moria or anything related to him, I have to say, I forget. But we've got a 50-50 chance here, so you know, that's a pretty good. So we're gonna flip a coin and we are going to go with yes. It was not yes. All right, so I looked this up as well. And in case you're wondering, the numbers 200 to 399 designate the surprise zombies, not the soldier zombies. Soldiers are 400 to 799. Not that either surprise or soldier zombies were relevant ever. Question 10, where was the great Taff temple completed in the year 306 in the Age of Heaven? Was it Rain Base, Arbana, which I'm assuming is Alubana, Erumalu, or Nanohana? Okay, we can work this out. So so if I remember right, this is all part of the potential pure gibberish that Robin was spouting on the Poneglyph instead of telling Crocodile where the ancient weapon was. But we can do this by elimination. Mostly because I don't remember there being a temple in Rain Base. There was a wonderful casino called Rain Dinners. Uh, there also wasn't one in Nanahana or Arbana. Like the big special thing about Alabana is the palace and the tomb, neither of which are temples, I hope. Which basically leaves us with one option being Erumal. So let's see what we got. And it turns out what we got is delicious correctness. Are the sea snakes which carry the ship of Boa Hancock called Yuda? Yes or no? Uh, this might be a tricky question because if I remember this right, Hancock ship is called like the perfume Yuda, but I don't know if that's about the snake specifically, but I think I'm gonna have to say yes because I will kick myself if it is correct. And I did even remember the word Yuda, so whatever, we're doing that. And phew. Yeah. Who labeled Mocktown, the city of ridicule, Willie Gallon, Joe Wall, or Louis Sarnot. Well, it's these guys again, except in this case, I have no memory of this whatsoever. Who is Joe Wall and Louis Sarnot? Ugh. I mean, I'm guessing it's one of the latter two because Willie Gallon is definitely not quoted twice in the series. I know that much, that random scientist thing. It was a one-off thing, which is why it's so weird and sticks out. So we're just gonna go down the list because honestly, 
I'm not sure. So next up, it's Joe Wall's turn, so let's do it. Aha, this time 50-50 pays off, but I definitely need to look this guy up. And after some digging, I found this reference. It's in chapter 222 during Jai, which quotes, and I quote this quote, log of the Jew wall, which quite frankly makes him sound more like the wailing wall in Jerusalem. But it's such a weird translation. So is it not actually a person? Because surely that would be the log of the Jew wall, not log of the Jew wall. In any case, it looks like Oda was clearly in a bit of a phase during Jaira and Skype here, making up all sorts of famous quotes from world figures that we'd, well, we'd never hear from again. Really does make me wonder if Lewis or not is going to show up in a third question because I have no memory of that name either, but he probably exists. Question 13, which two crew members have worn Luffy's hat besides himself? Robin Chopper, Nami Zoro, Sanji Zoro, Usopp Nami, it's that one, or Chopper and Usopp. Oh, that's an uncharacteristically easy question. Usopp and Nami, bam, next. 14 is the code for the lock on the fridge, brackets on the thousand sunny, close brackets. I'm glad that was clarified actually, because we could be talking about any fridge, but is that code 7326, yes or no? I only vaguely remember something about this. Like if the question was, is there a lock on the fridge, brackets on the thousand sunny, then I would say yes. But I, I, I'm on, I don't know if this is the actual code. It could be, or it could be a stupid, stupid question, which just changes a single digit just so it can point and laugh at you and call you a dumbass when you inevitably get it wrong. I could definitely remember a code. So we got, we've got to go with yes, right? I'm going to feel like such a moron if it's no, and I knew it, so yes. Yeah, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, good, good. You better be right. 15, which of these names could be seen on one of the gravestones at Whiskey Peak? Is it Mr. 14, Miss Danger, Mr. Sacrifice, or Miss Not Coming Back? Oh man, I'm not sure. Like, I know it's not either of the first two because it was something funny. So with that in mind, I think I'm gonna have to go with Miss Not Coming Back because I personally find that quite hilarious and, oh, what? Oh, it was Mr. Sacrifice, really? Missed opportunity. And of course, I just looked it up and here is the grave of Mr. Sacrifice in all of his uh, deceased glory. Although apparently in the anime, you can see even more names, which is staff members names spelled backwards. And yeah, that's pretty fun, I guess. 16, according to Dory and Brogy, how many fights have they had? Numbers, 50,002, 86,550, 21,684, or 73,466. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no idea. I mean, they've been fighting for a century, so we can probably use a special technique to work this out. I mean, what's it called? Um, yeah, yeah, mathematics? What is that like two, maybe three fights a day, depending on how the volcano is feeling at the time? So it's either 86 or 73. Yeah, I mean, no, it's not a good, it could also obviously be 50, but I see big numbers and I want to click them. Got to temper myself a bit though, so we're gonna go for 73 and, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I just stumbled my way into correct. There. That was definitely an unearned victory. I should hang my head in shame. Question 17, what is the money in Skypea called? Berry, Extol, Sky Dollar, or Rubens? And it is Extol. Easy, easy. I know this one because I made a video about the economics of One Piece and fun fact, Skypea is one of the few nations in the world that do not use berries. Others include the Goa Kingdom and Wano, which I believe use gore and gold respectively. Because that's right, I am well versed in fictional economics. Question 18. Who named Little Garden? Was it Willie Gallon? Jew Wall or Joe Wall? It says Joe here, but it says Jew elsewhere. Or Lewis or not? Hmm, I wonder which one it could be. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling pretty good about the answer to this one. <laughs> so Lewis, it's probably your time to shine and bam, yay. All right, let's look you up because I don't remember you either. Okay, so this guy was responsible for writing something I don't remember in the series, a book called Brag Men, which was a collection of stories from the Grand Line. It's mentioned by Nami in chapter 115 because apparently they had a copy of this book aboard the Going Merry. And one of those stories details Little God. 19, who gave the name Norla to the Skypean snake? 
So first of all, trick question, no one gave the name Nola to anything, it's definitely Nola. But for the purposes of playing along, is it Norland, Kargara, Set, or Wiper? Okay, so actually, as much as I'm making fun of the spelling of names here, this is gonna be a bit embarrassing, because, okay, so it's definitely not Wiper, because he wasn't alive. It's not gonna be that embarrassing. It wasn't Noland, because he was not that self-obsessed. Here's the awkward part, I don't remember who Set is, so I've Got to go with Kalgara, who according to this is Kargara. So let's see where that path takes us. And uh, I'm wrong, as per usual. It was Set. And looking this guy up, his name is actually Seto, but I would not have remembered him anyway. 20, what was the name of the mushroom that Chopper gave Dr. Hiroluk? Waraidake, Amiudake. Fugo Fugo or Poi Dake. Another easy one, Amiodake, which I only remember due to the sheer pain it causes my mind, my body, my heart, and my soul to so much as think of that stupid mushroom. 21, what was the name of the insect which infected Nami in Little Garden? Is it a Poa Worm? Hercules Bug? Janai Worm? Or Kestia Bug? All right, we can use logic here, like not noodle logic, we can use actual logic. I don't know the exact answer off the top of my head, but but I am almost 100% certain that it was not a worm. And I also feel pretty good about it not being a Hercules bug because that doesn't sound particularly worrisome or poisonous in any way. Not that I know anything about like Hercules beetles or anything, but I don't think they're that deadly to me. So once again, by the process of elimination, I guess we are going with Kestia, doing it, and ha, huzzah, I did it. Where is Dr. Hiroluk originally from? Drum -m -m -m, with two Ms. West Blue, New, New World Island, what is it, what even is that? Sakura or Villa? Okay, so this is actually kind of a tricky question. I mean, first of all, there are only two reasonable answers, New World Island, Sakura, and Villa. You're all being eliminated immediately because, I mean, what even are they, what is Villa? But here's the thing, I'm pretty sure the answer is Drum, however, is that too obvious? Because Hiroluk does also have a connection to East Blue, however, I want to say that that's where he saw the Sakura that inspired him, and then he returned to Drum? Like Hiroluk left Drum, traveled the world, saw a pretty tree, then came back to Drum. It's gotta be Drum. Drum, Drum, Drum. And yeah, it's Drum. 23, how many rings are behind Bellamy's figurehead? What? I, uh, two, three, four, or five. So Bellamy's figurehead, I, like, what are we even talking about? Are we talking about the figurehead of his ship or is this referring to his Jolly Roger? I will say that in either case, it doesn't matter because I don't remember his ship or his Jolly Rogers, so we're just guessing again. And I like the number three. It's nice and round in a very odd way, so we're gonna go with that. And no, it was not three, it was four. Of course, it was four because... Yeah, so it was referring to Bellamy's ship, which is called the New Witch's Tongue, which is such a cool ship name. And you can clearly see four rings floating magically around the figurehead here. It's a really cool ship, actually. Which makes my final result 70 out of 100, apparently. So 16 questions right, seven questions wrong, which I don't think is too bad, although it does notably say on the results that I have failed. So I have failed despite the fact that I have a certificate of achievement. And I feel like this is kind of like walking up to the person who comes last in the race and deciding to immortalize their failure forever with a grand trophy. Anyway, that was pretty fun. The quiz actually destroyed me with all of its weird details. And if you'd like to have some more fun, then do check out this video detailing Oda's one weird trick that holds the entirety of One Piece together. Pretty massive stuff, so I look forward to seeing you there.